Hey, <clears throat> what's going on, everybody? <laughs> Sorry. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy Blues Day Tuesday. Does that even exist anymore? I guess it still does. Stuff comes out today. We'll talk about that and many other things. Uh, how's your morning, everybody? How you doing? I'm good. I got my girls out to school and work. I'm like, you know, Alice on the Brady Bunch, man, handing out, you know, sack lunches and all that good stuff. <laughs> whatever uh but yeah you know i got my my mug of tea what you guys rocking today you know uh gosh just so many things so uh so we're just gonna have a nice cash morning today uh i don't have to cut it off at nine like i did last week but uh you guys will, will drive the show all right so whatever you have uh for me we'll just take it and we'll roll with it but uh, first you know the drill grab a drink grab a snack because it's time say with me for the morning mug. Friends, welcome back to the morning mug. Now let's chat. Oh yeah, who's getting themselves a little groovy King Kong this week? <laughs> it's not a great King Kong movie, y'all. Let's be honest. That's a sweet looking packaging, though. I mean, it, it is rocking. Uh, but what do you guys think of that that King Kong? You know, here. I mean, I'm sort of telegraphing it, but let's that let's think ahead of ourselves. Let's say, welcome to the morning mug first. And then let's get out and see who are the lovely people in our chat, starting with the, oh my gosh, always generous, always lovely, Tiana loves movies. Happy almost birthday. Well, thank you, Tiana. It is a tomorrow, y'all. It's my birthday. Uh, as always, I won't be able to watch, but I'll catch the replay. Have a great morning. Mwah! I shall. Thank you, my dear. Look at that. You know, that's a birthday. That's a birthday gift right there. So you get a little uh, something back at you. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. It's for you, girl. I haven't played that in a while. That was always fun to play. So thank you, thank you, Tiana. It's my birthday's off to a great start. A day early. Uh, Kyle's here. Say good morning, Huck. Getting lost in space. Atta boy. Shout Factory Blu ray King Kong 4K Steelbook. Nice. There's my boy. There, there's my John Campia <laughs> dude. Hey there, Huck. How you doing? I'm good, man. See, I always read yours. John just, uh, that was pretty awesome. Were you still in there by the time when he read, or did you kind of leave something and then, like, oh, I gotta go do stuff? Sometimes I'll do that. I'll just leave stuff and I don't know. But, uh, yeah, in case you guys don't know, so John Campy, he's a, a YouTube personality. He did a, uh, a you know, a, a open mic thing yesterday, and he was just reading off comments off to the side. And Adrian James got his name shouted out, <laughs> right on. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Hey, Collector Movie Man says, "Hey, Huck, good morning uh, to you. Did you know CinemaCon was going on right now? Now today." Is the Warner Brothers panel, and they're supposed to show off the Joker 2 trailer. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, CinemaCon. That is not something us lesser folk are good to go to. It's very expensive. That is for people like John Campia <laughs> to go to and his staff. In fact, his staff can't really afford to go to it unless he pays for them to go with them. Um, so, yeah. So, I have no staff. <laughs> uh, I just got done listening to the John Campia. John can't be show. He's at the CinemaCon right now. Okay, look at that. I was just talking about John. That's so see, see that Carmel. I've not read ahead. You know me. I don't read ahead. Thank you for the almost birthday wish there, bud. Appreciate it. Tiger Blue. Sup? So good morning, all in the chat. See, this is again, this is like I'm just pulling up a chair to the table. All my friends are there and just pulling up. We're starting to chat. Wilkie's here. Corey, good morning to you. What's going on? He was a great host a couple of weeks ago. If you guys missed that show, check out one of my previous morning mugs where Corey was the host. Man, I love having co-hosts. It's It just has uh, such an engagement to it. So I'll definitely have something planned coming up in the future with some more co-hosts. Coffee. So Collect Movie Man's got coffee. What else does, does everybody else have? Let's see. He says, good morning, Tiger Blue. Tony's here. What up, buddy? How's it going, Huck? Chat? Happy Tuesday? Mm-hmm. 
The third KB is here. Greetings. Good morning, all at work, but tuning in for it all uh, for a little. <laughs> Sorry. Hey there, Huckster and morning muggles. What up, fish man? Good to see you. Hey, Corey. Good morning. Craig. Hey, fish. Everybody's like saying, hey, pulling up their chair to the table. Your dog is so cute. Oh, thanks. You remember my dog? My little, my, let's see. Do I still have the, the little dogster floating around? Oh, I had him in here. I'll have to get, I'll have to put it back here. Yeah, a little picture of a little black doggy. Yeah, he's awesome. So, you know, we just got back from vacay and boy, was he excited we were home. <laughs> Man, like dogs, we had a, a house sitter, which was nice. So they they watched after him and, you know, he likes it. But as soon as we came home, oh my God, he, he just went nuts. And he always loves seeing that, you know. You don't want him to look at it and you go, hmm, with that disapproval look in his face and just walk outside and take a dump, like telling you how he feels. You don't want that. <laughs> uh, Scaps. Oh, how you doing, Scaps? Good morning, Huck. Uh, did you watch a new Lost in Space Blu-ray yet? How much better is it than the original Blu-ray? I haven't watched it yet, but check it out. I'm ready to watch it. Because by the time I watched it, then we were prepping for our vacation. We were My daughter is headed off to college, and we had three colleges to tour during her spring break. So a lot of prep work in that. And I had to watch a couple of other things for the Collectors Club coming up. But this month, birthday month, maybe on my birthday, maybe tomorrow, I'll try to squeeze that in. Let's see. Uh, so yeah, I will let you know next week. That'll be my my commitment to you. How you feeling, Scabs? Hope you're doing better. Uh, let's see. Hello, Collector Tiger. Everybody said, hey. Uh, yeah, that King Kong movie is not very good. <laughs> they weren't sure if Kong was a monster or a more sentimental creature. Uh, kind of a no emotional tie-in. I know. And, you know, it's a dude in a suit, but it's a good looking dude in a suit. It's Rick Baker. I mean, you can't get better than that dude in a suit, but... I don't know. It just, of all the King Kongs, it, it, it has the least Kong magic. Orange Peachy, what up, my dude? Yeah, yeah. You just chilling on your tablet? What you got today? Orange Peachy. What did you have for breakfast? What are you drinking right now? The huckster needs to know. Uh, let's see. He's saying, hey. Uh, I just got Burn Notice. Nice. The complete series on DVD yesterday. And the packaging is completely different than what I expected. Did you get the tubs? Collector movie made. Did you get the, that crappy tub? The big old tub where you pop it open and then, you know, discs are falling all over the place. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. If you watch my channel, I did a uh, a custom consolidation, but I, it was a, a more like a an expansion rather than a consolidation. I took all of those out of that tub and I basically uh, created covers for all seasons i got multiple dvd cases disc case holder holder cases and i basically expanded it into their own stuff well here it's can i reach it yeah here it is like i'll just grab a couple so there you go right there so these originally were in tubs i'm like no i hate the tubs man now i can just open it and get right to the disc so if i want uh season five disc two i just go right to them y'all that's that oh, the, the, those tubs, those tubs. I get my goat, Crockett and tubs. <laughs> what are you talking about? Huck? All right, uh, that's a good tubs. Let's see. All right, so there you go. I hear you. Hey, Adrian. Let's see, uh, good morning. Huck. What's up, Brent? The eclipse was amazing yesterday here in Vermont. Completely. To oh, nice. Complete totality was incredible to see. I bet it was. I had friends who literally left town here in California to go to a more convenient place to see that just how you saw it. And that's the thing, man. I mean, when you're going to have something that unique and that special, I have to live vicariously through you, Brent. Uh, I hope you took, we, I mean, it's also not something you can really take a good picture unless you have like super good telephoto lenses and that kind of stuff. So perhaps you just put on the glasses and just live the moment. That's kind of how I'd want to do it. I mean, what are you going to do? Go back. Like if you're, if you're videotaping it, go back and watch the videotape. Like, Oh, here it comes. I mean, I'd rather just live in the moment and then go online and look at pictures that other people captured and go, yeah, that was a good time. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you got to see a good totality, man. That's fantastic. Uh, saying, Hey, and now this is here. I'm waiting for my King Kong 4k to be delivered. Huck. I enjoyed your loss, but well, 
thank you. I appreciate that. You know what? Let, let me let me just shine a little appreciation on that. So I, I really appreciate you saying that. This is the video that we're talking about. Um, it's hang on, let me just pop you off real quick. All right. Uh, so there it is. I made this great video. It was a lot of fun. Uh, went out to Santa Cruz and got to visit all, all of these different places. And again, didn't have a ton of time. I had three hours, y'all, to do all this for you guys. So that's that's what I churned out in three hours. Uh, I mean, with a bit of a cheat because I did have to come back. Well, you'll see. There is something I had to come back to Santa Clarita for. Uh, but you'll see in the video why that is. And that's another six-hour drive back home. So it was a very time consuming video to make. And, you know, some people have watched it. You know, that's what I've noticed. You know, you try to branch out and, and give people something creative and interesting because those things actually have more of my personality in them than those shopping videos. I'm going to try to make shopping videos interesting as I can. But, you know, in the end, it's videos like this that I think are cool, fun, entertaining. You can watch more than once. You can watch two, three years from now and it's still relevant. Whereas all those other things just, they have a shelf life of like two weeks, <laughs> you know? So you got to get as much as you can in like two weeks. So I'm going to keep committing. Nay, I say, whether you watch or not, videos like this, because I feel like um, they're fun to do for me and, uh, and they're good. Now, speaking of videos, uh, tonight, let me pimp out Bob's Blu-rays. Uh, got a little thing going on. Uh, it's called Think Fast, Bob's Game Night. Uh, look, you just have to see it to believe it. We're all on a time crunch. It's probably going to throw out some titles. It's probably going to make the old huckster sweat. And look, I'm always the underdog, y'all. I mean, look look at this cast. Look, <clears throat> Fish, Jake, Ken, Jeff, Tiffany, Tony, Tim, and then me. There's a reason I'm last, right? I don't think he accidentally put the huckster last. I think just inherently he feels... Well, hugs here for the personality, not for the victory. <laughs> so I need your help, y'all. Just show up, root me on, you know. We know who's going to like, you know, start pushing ahead, you know. And good for them. But, you know, I'm going to need some love down at the bottom. <laughs> Why would he invite me against people like that? Look at that. All right, but I'm, I'm in for it. I'm in for it. Look, the last one, I went for it. I did really good. Like, like, like our team, we did a thing where we went up against another team. And they were ahead two, two to nothing. We're going to call it a day. And then we played one more. We won. We played another one. We tied two to two. In the end, Team Tim came out victorious. Kudos to them. But I'm telling you, like, we we brought it back. It's very stressful, too, because sometimes, like, it's it was dodgeball. Like, it's, the premise is based on dodgeball. And for some reason, I guess because I was last, I ended up always kind of being the last one there. It was very nervous. It's like, it's just me against Johnny, me against Tim. It's like, oh, I can't go out. If I go out, it's over. And just manage to stay afloat. I bring fish back in. I bring you know, Johnny back in. So, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Not Johnny. I went up against Johnny. So, anywho, um, go check out. That was fun, too. Uh, what else we got y'all? I mean, we, we, we can get into some new releases here in a second. Let's see. Yeah. I got that page up, right? Saying, Hey, we get some haze in Craig. Happy birthday. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate that. Am I still making it? I am. Okay. All right. Cool. Gotta know. Hold on. <laughs> Gotta sneeze. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm a loud sneezer, y'all. <laughs> it was like one of those, hey, I, chew. I don't hold back. I don't do the old, Ugh. I don't, oh, like, I don't know how you do that without blowing your ears out. Like, I literally had to get up and just, ha chewy. <laughs> Stop it, Huck. All right. What's my favorite Ghostbuster movie? Well, Orange Peachy, you know, I, I'm going for the the OG, the, the first one. The first one's my favorite. Uh, I, I enjoy the franchise as a whole. I love the new ones. Afterlife, Frozen Empire, great. Two's got its moments, but there's just something magical about the first Ghostbusters. The, you know, the timing, the story, the acting, the directing, the effects, all that stuff just came together so nicely with the perfect cast. So I got to go with that one. What about you, buddy? What is yours? Now, I know you're one of our younger audience members. Do you lean more towards, do you like Afterlife or Frozen Empire better? Or are you like your dad? I know your dad. He's OG boy, too. Mm -hmm. With his little sweet Ghostbusters outfit. Doom, 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 doom. 
I saw your pictures. You guys look like you were having fun when you went and saw the movie. Uh, I, uh, I should finally be watching Poor Things tomorrow. Nice. Rental coming. Looking forward. Well, Tiger Blue, buckle up <laughs> and get ready. Because it ain't. Yeah, it is something special. Get ready, man. It's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm sure you know enough or not enough. That's the best way to go into that movie. Orange Peachy, that is not a movie for you. Do not watch Poor Things. Uh -uh -uh. No, sir. No, no. Uh-uh. Uh, the Moon Man says, and I also got a Funko Pop of Finn Tula from Law and Order SVU. You can tell I do not watch that show. Uh, oh, that's the IT character. Nice. And he is running, uh, he is the running actor on a television series. Yeah, I know who he is. Uh, he started in 1982. Yeah. Wow. It ended last year? Wow, that is a long run. I just got a Funko Pop of Garaka. And Ray from Frozen Empire. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Garaka. Am I saying that right? A pop of Garaka and Ray. That sounds like a cool pop, my man. Sounds cool. Uh, I was really disappointed because Amazon damaged the Funko Pop. Oh, no. And I'm sending it uh, back to Amazon today. Yeah, well, they do that sometimes. Just send it back to, to you get a good one. Brent says, uh, the Lost Boys video was fun. The comic book store at the end was cool to see the original. Yeah. So check it, Brent. Yeah, it was great. And he gave me so much time. Like when we were standing in front of that rack, first of all, here's the thing. So I go in there, <laughs> I meet the guy and he just starts telling stories. I'm like, I'm not rolling. Like he just kept going. I'm like, uh, and then finally when he stopped, I'm like, Joe, I love these stories. Can I just like uh, blog you real quick? Just, you know, just say, Hey, and, and, and he goes, Oh, hang on. And then he stands up. Why? He like, he knew he's done this y'all so many times, not his first rodeo. And he went out and he, and he picked that spot where we're standing in front of all the comics. When he picked up the comic book of the lost boys, and he gave me every story that he told me sitting down in that chair again. Now, I also felt that he was doing that. I'm like, oh, he's going there again. So I, I remember the story. So I would tee them all back up for him. Just when, when we thought he was done, I'd be like, oh, and I heard you have a cameo in the movie as well. Like, so I told that story because I knew he told me the story. So it was actually kind of fortuitous he told me all the stories first so that that video is coming i'm trying to let the lost boys have some life first yeah so what little life it has and then maybe next week or something i'll try to put up the full interview with joe um try to roll in some uh video i don't know if you guys noticed too so <laughs> in that video so many people do videos with clips in them longer clips than i was using Full video, audio, the works. And they get like, and so I, and I'm, I'm going to shout out some some really good people. So there's this uh, YouTuber called Grim Life. He also did uh, The Lost Boys, but a full, like I just had three hours because we had a small amount of time between colleges and we went and, that, and that's what I was able to pull off. Whereas these guys probably go out for days and they cover the whole thing. And it's fantastic. So if you've never seen a Grim Life, go see those guys. They are fantastic. Uh, and it, it's just, I don't know. What am I trying to say? I got on a tangent. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. What's it going to say? Uh, yeah. anyway. Um, so the, the thing with Joe, oh, the, the clips in them. So, uh, and I keep thinking how, how, how are they being monetized for those videos? Cause I would use similar clips because I'm talking about similar things. And when I posted it, I, the original edit, just to give you a peek behind the curtain, it instantly was demonetized. It says, nope, nope, all these clips. I'm like, really? So if you watch, I'll give you a little hint when you go back and watch, you'll see that I that I flipped some shots. So if you flip them, they don't line up to the algorithm, I think, because I've, I've seen that before. And I used as little audio as I could. I just trimmed out everything with audio, unless it's just motorcycles going down the steps, stuff like that. And that passed. So the current video you see up is passed and, and is monetized. So, so you really got to figure out what, what they let you play and what you, I don't know. I just don't get YouTube. It's like, they say it's okay to use clips if it's done in a way that sort of um, is, a, is a news or informative thing, or it gives it a different narrative, which all of those things are. But uh, anyway, that's my trick. That's what I did to get it to you. Uh, 818 Richard. Hang on, let me get this. Drajic? 
Richard Dreyschick. All right, let's go. I'm waiting for the Small Wonder and Silver Spoons TV show box sets. Big fan of those? Nice. I love TV box sets. I just got, um, oh, I got uh, Get Smart recently for my TV collection. You'll definitely be there. Noise. Be there. Root me on. You know, everybody in last place needs some love. <laughs> I've not seen that Lost Boys video yet. I'm not a big fan of the movie. However, I'm guessing you don't need to, uh, to appreciate the video. Uh, no, I guess you don't. It's. I think it's more fun if you if you like the movie because then you go, oh, cool, I remember that. But, um, I mean, I try to make it fun even if, like, if you've, if you've never heard of it, I try to make it fun so that if you watch it, it'll make you want to watch it. Like now my daughter wants to watch the movie because she actually helps me uh, film some stuff in the video. You'll see her. She's used button. Ah, yesterday. Proud daddy moment. So I've been teaching Brooke to drive for like the past six months. And I remember the first day, sniff, we went to a, a, a derelict, de derelict, a desolate parking lot, an empty parking lot using big words, like <laughs> an empty parking lot right up the street here uh, and taught her to drive, taught her to drive around the, the parking lot, park in the parking lot, do all these things. And then that was like day one. And then from then we, the parking lots got bigger and bigger and more crowded, put cars in it. So she'd have to deal with parking between cars and avoiding cars and, and all that good stuff. Well, yesterday was her big driver's ed test behind the wheel. And we were a little nervous because the driver, the driver's ed guy, he looked like he came out of like Starship Troopers or something. He had khaki pants, jack boots, and a white t-shirt and sunglasses. Well, and and just glasses that you know. I was like, dang, all, all, all that was missing were dog tags <laughs> from this dude, and he could have started in aliens. And I'm like, oh, she's not gonna pass today. But I guess maybe they do that on purpose to kind of intimidate you to see how well you'll drive under pressure. Crushed it crushed it so her first time taking the test i now have a new driver in the house so when daddy wants to go somewhere and you know she wants to go out she can drop me off at the movies like i used to do her <laughs> what are you kidding hug she never get dropped off at the movies kids today man you don't go to the movies you watch it at home but anyway proud daddy moment uh, i totally agree i like shopping videos but it's only interesting for the day or the week um <clears throat> a knowledge about a popular movie will be interesting to all that likes that movie yes in fact, let's uh, let's put a pin in you there, pal. Let's 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 tee this up. I, I like that you you went there since since we do love shopping and getting stuff. And you saw my my opening video. It had the Kongster right there. Well, let, let's get to it. Let's do a little shopping, y'all. For Glergen. There we go. Hold on. There we go. I'm covering up the Kong. There he is. All right. So we got that sweet Kong on Steelbook, y'all, coming out today. Uh, like I said, great looking steel for a mediocre movie. Let's face it. If you've seen it, like if anybody's seen it, says, oh, it's one of my favorite movies. I love that. I love that movies like any kind of movie can appeal to anybody. But for me, loving the original, loving Peter Jackson's, loving the new MonsterVerse, this one's just okay. But that is a dope looking steel book. So uh, I'm tempted. I'll say that. Uh, I, I may need to rewatch it first because my thing too is, uh, I love that they've done such a really nice packaging job. That looks really good. Here, let, let's let's just give you guys a nice fat close-up. Bam! Holy mackerel, look at this thing. Dang, y'all. Look at this. Jessica Lang. Look at that monkey all growling at Fay Ray. <laughs> so there you go, man. So that, that's the Kong Master. So if you're getting it, that's cool. Now, Lost in Space is all, let's see, <clears throat> Picnic Hanging at Hanging Rock. Not familiar with that movie, but is a criterion. Pardon me. Holy. <clears throat> Hang on. All right, we're back, I think. <clears throat> there it is. So, Lost in Space, as we mentioned earlier, is being released by Shout. Or Scream Factory, as we'll call it, and check it out. Like I said, already got my copy. So I, I pre-ordered it, So uh, and it came with a poster. Poster's nice. Poster is literally the same thing as that. But I can't wait to dive into this and hope to check it out. Maybe on my birthday. Uh, let's see. Monster, the Doom Patrol, the complete series, if you guys watch that. Lisa Frankenstein, 
Mean Guns with Christopher Lambert. That can be only one. It's my Lambert impression. Uh, it's a Wonderful Knife. <laughs> I love the horror pun titles. Those are some of my favorites. The Minus Man, another Doom Patrol. So you got, what is it, a complete series? What's the diff? Anyway, there's two different versions. <clears throat> Abandoned Night Swim. I saw Night Swim. A lot of people trashed on Night Swim. Maybe I'm just not as judgy about my horror movies because there, pe there are people who take their horror much more serious than I do. Uh, I'm more of a sci-fi guy than horror. So I, I had fun with Night Swim. I thought it was a good little watch. Like, I, I don't need to watch it again. Probably won't make the collection, but I, I enjoyed going out to the cinema and watching it. The Looters. You can never tell. Was it? You never can tell. Oh, sorry, a little dyslexic there. Um, Fallen Leaves, Winnie Pooh, Blood and Honey. I never, like, I don't know, are these reissues? They're always, these things are out already. Uh, Death Squad, Orozco, the, the, um, the Embalmer. Oh, that sounds gnarly. Special Silencers. Shh, they're special. Accidentally Preserved. That sounds like some food in my fridge right now. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, seed People, the Roundup. Snuff 102. That looks disturbing. Uh, let's see. The Roundup. What is that? It looks like a kung fu movie. Um, Peter Grill and the Philosophers. Necro Six Pack. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Well, that's it. That that looks like. So, so the Big Mamma Jam is really is like the top two rows here. King Kong, Lost in Space, Lisa Frankenstein, Doom Patrol, if you're a fan of the TV show, and maybe even Night Swim. So well, that's what's out there, y'all. Anybody, what y'all getting? I got to know. I got to know. The, 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 it's, it's open. It's, it's, I got I to gotta know. I mean, I, got, I know what I'm going to get. I, I don't know what you're going to get. But, 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 but. What Sue going to get? What Sue going to get? Hey! What's Sue gonna get? And these guys too. Now the steal the crew. Tell them, Sue. What's Sue gonna get? What's Sue gonna, gonna get? get? I don't know, but hey, what's Sue gonna get? And of course, Tony, Dave, Mizzy, Commander Nerd. All them good peeps, man. What are they gonna get? What are you gonna get? We all wanna know what's we gonna get. Uh, so for me, the only thing currently is Lost in Space, which I already have. I'm, I'm really mulling over King Kong. You guys let me know if that's something I should jump on. Uh, I'm still hoping to get the Major League uh, Locker Room Steelbook. Of course, I went out to my... <laughs> Y'all, I went out to my Walmart again, like yesterday. And nothing, there's nothing uh, in the steelbook section. It's the exact same, like seven steelbooks I've seen the last seven times I've been there. And I keep hoping around the corner, right? And just see like a full pallet. I'm like, finally, the dude stocked it. But now, no. So uh, I got to try to order it online. See, last time I waited like this, I missed getting the uh, Willy Wonka one with the chocolates. Because I'm like, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to make it a shopping video. Went in there, nothing. I'm like, oh, I'll go back and order it online. Sold out all in the same day. So that's what happens sometimes when you roll the dice, y'all. When you wait. Frozen Empire. There you go. I did enjoy Frozen Empire. Did you see my review of uh, Frozen Empire? I liked it. I liked it. Uh, the first Ghostbusters for Adrian James. Nice. Um, I'm seeing Civil War. Oh, yeah. I remember you were you were really wanting to see that. Van Gool is here. Greetings. Welcome. I love Grim Life Collective. Um, yes, him and his wife are awesome. They are, man. I love their videos. They am good. They do very, very, very thorough. See, see, this is the type of thing. What I love about their channel is their stuff isn't dated. You know, like if you love touring, I mean, if, if you like touring of locations, that's what they do very well. And they, they're very thorough and they cover and they have great facts. And those can be watched anytime, all the time. So I'm thinking of trying to do something to pivot the channel because uh, I, I got to be honest with y'all. I got to be honest. This is what, uh, this is what happened yesterday. <laughs> so I also put out the same day as the Lost Boys uh, a video haul. 
thing, like to, to recap all of March, just to test the waters. And sure enough, in one hour, that, that video matched the views of the Lost Boys, which had been posted six hours before that. Proving people prefer you holding up shiny things going, look, than actually going out and presenting them with content. However, I mean, that's what they do and do very well. So I, I need to pivot and think of things I can do that are long lasting for the channel because I took all those videos from that haul and I put them in my shelves and gang, there's just no more space left. There's no more space left behind me over here on the TV, the TV wall. There's no more space left over here on the 4k. There's a little space left for maybe a handful of 4ks and a few more steel books. That's it. That's my reality. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing y'all. This isn't TMI. This is just literally letting you know, like I can't, I can't buy any more stuff. I like, I don't know what to do. I might need your help. I need, I might need suggestions and stuff because if I do continue to buy, this is what's going to happen. They're going to go directly in a tub and probably in the garage. That's what's going to happen. Cause if there's no room to put them, why would I go buy them? Uh, the, the fun part is having been out of work for a while. Oh, by the way, I got a job y'all. It starts on Thursday. Oh, finally. So I'll be able to afford some stuff that I can't buy because I got no room. But um, yeah, it's been two and a half months without a job. So it's nice that money's going to start coming in. But the room is just, it's packed to the gills, y'all. It's packed. I can't, yeah, I'm looking around while I'm talking to you. And there's just no, no more space. It's the smallest room in the house. Because my daughter's not going to give up her room. We're not going to give up our room just to put a YouTube thing inside of it. But that's what's happening. So I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I got ideas and you're probably not going to like it because people want me to hold up stuff and say, I got that. I mean, I'll probably still try to do those videos, but I'm going to need, I'm going to need a little reinvention. You know, people really just look at, I'm going to take a page out of Bill Shatner's uh, playbook. That man reinvented himself like a dozen times over. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull a Shatner and figure out something else to offer you on this channel. And you're going to love it. It's going to be high quality. It's going to be good stuff. Like I always do. <laughs> my slouching. Just notice my headroom. Okay. Uh, collector movie says, oh my God. I just looked on the Comic-Con that I have coming to Michigan this year. And Helen Hunt is going to be there. No way. Well, you need to go see her. Kobe Smol uh, Smolders is going to be there also. I love her. Need That's two autographs you got to get. Bengal says, shopping videos help us know what stores have. Yes. And uh, what's in stock? Well, if I showed you all mine, you'll definitely know what's not in stock. But uh, this thing is, I, I love doing those too. They're fun to get out and do. Um, but it's it's just a bummer that that's the only thing that gets major traction. I have some really great exclusive videos on this channel, y'all, that no one's watching. And I know there's a fan base for each and everything that I'm I'm making these for. Like, like, there you go for the Lost Boys. We'll, we'll see in the long run how Lost Boys does. I'm not really, like, down on that video yet. It's just funny that I expected it to not do as well as a shopping video, and I, and I was right. But we'll see if it just stops getting views or if it keeps going for a while because I've made things for uh, a James Bond exhibit. That I'm telling you guys, if you're a James Bond fan, I don't know why this thing doesn't have thousands of views. It is so good. Even like I've watched it personally several times because it just like I spent a lot of time there shooting all the cars and props and uh, vehicles and just it's it was amazing. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I dropped it one week before the very last James Bond movie thinking, oh, this is perfect. My timing is perfect. It's coming out for the last James Bond movie. It's going to be this fever, fever for it. <laughs> Ain't no fever, Huck. <laughs> Ain't no fever. None. People were healthy as a horse. No fever. All right. Let's get back to it. Whoops. <laughs> I've never seen the King Kong movie. I really want uh, I really want to get it, but I have to wait. I got you. Huck, have you seen Fantastic Voyage? Because there's a remake coming and it's directed. Oh. What? James Cameron is doing a fantastic. Where? That is breaking news. 
for real? I thought he was like involved with uh, Avatar one, uh, the uh, three, four, and five. Like, wh when is he going to do that? I have seen that, by the way. And you know, I'm an old sci-fi junkie, so uh, I dug it. But I mean, I'm all in. <laughs> Let's see. So I now I'm all hang on, y'all. This is this is breaking news. Oh my! It's like it auto fills. She says, "Okay, <laughs> scoop time." Look at this. James Cameron updates Fantastic Voyager remake. We plan to go ahead with it very soon. I don't know what "very soon" means with James Cameron because he's got so many irons in the fire. I think I wish he would just do the last. The third Avatar be done and make new movies, man. Yeah, I don't know. But it says, uh, what I read here, a remake of the classic 1966 film. That's a good year. <laughs> uh, which he had nearly directed himself. Uh, all right. So we've been developing it for years. And we plan to go ahead very soon. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. But we think we can make a pretty good movie. All right. Well, that sounds great. <laughs> you have me super excited because I'm a sci-fi fan, Cameron fan. That is great. I mean, what is that though? Eight years down the line, but uh, I'll be there. Can't wait uh, for next week for The Departed. I know that's a terrible steelbook though. It's just, for me. It's 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 terrible. It's just got a big X on it, and you totally didn't even put Wahlberg in there, and he's like on the tin, you know. And in fact, it's just like a piece of a building in the last one I'm like did someone run out and go hey you got that wallberg image oh sorry chief that's what you asked me to get Eh, send it to the printers like by the way speaking of wallberg i for the first time watched the fighter with christian bale where they play the brothers daniel i want to give you a recommendation right here right now what am I saying? It, it came out in 2010. You've all probably seen it. Some things, you know, some things you're just late to the game on, which is great because sometimes it's like it's fun to come across a movie you've heard about for a long time and then finally give it a shot and it holds up. That's what this movie did for me. I was like, oh my God, the acting is stellar. I see why. Bale won the Oscar. Melissa Leo plays his mom, won the Oscar. I am kind of shocked that Wahlberg didn't even get nominated. He's fantastic in this. Amy Adams is great. Uh, this is just a, a really fantastic movie overall. So if you haven't seen the fighter, um, it's, it's very good. You gotta see it. Let's see. Uh, Doom Patrol is strange, weird, and fun. It is. It is. Pardon me. I pre-ordered matinee. Oh, and La Femme Nikita. I wish Nikita's price dropped by $10. I wish all these prices would drop. So <laughs> if you guys like me, I have, I have my wish list on Amazon. And, you know, I keep waiting for them to drop. I swear, everything that I've had, they've all gone, like, everything's gone up. I'm like, where are those price drops that 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 are always in? Some things came out at a cheap price. Like, I remember I Dream of Genie on, on Blu-ray was 27 bucks, and I almost pulled the trigger. I'm like, uh, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait. What do I tell myself? If it's at a good price and you're happy with the price, just get it. Even if it goes down three more dollars from then, don't. Now it's 40 something bucks and I'm out. I'm out. I don't care. Nope. <laughs> Knowing that it was once 27, it's very hard to go, oh, but at 49, that's a steal. Now I can't do it. I can't do it. All I can do is hope that one day Amazon will get everything, drop drop those things back down to the, the, the sweet prices, you know? I just pre ordered a. Uh, Species 2, Robocop, uh, the remake, and Chinatown. Nice. I'm grabbing King Kong Steel. Should be here today. Fish. Yeah. Check it out. And by the way, Fish, check it out. Fish, Fish is such a great dude. Uh, got a great channel. Go check him out. He gave me a fantastic recommendation recently, and that was Burlesque with Cher, the Queen, and uh, Christina Aguilera. They were fantastic. I'm telling you, this movie... I don't know. It just got under the radar. No one really talked about it that much, but it's good. I think I, Fish and I, I think I gave it four stars on Letterbox because it's just like I, I'm kind of shocked, Fish, that Christina doesn't act more. She was great because we forget that Christina, Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears—they all 
acted in Disney, like the little Disney shows when they were kids. So they have acting experience before they were even huge music stars. And um, she was good. She was very, very good. And I'm like, man, I wish Christina would, would act more. But Cher, oh my gosh. And they gave, they gave Cher some really good moments in that movie. So good. So thanks, Fish. Appreciate it. That was good. Uh, we know what Sue going to get. Some great Blu-rays. Dang tootin' Adrian. I think she's definitely going to get us some King Kong because that's a sweet steel book. And uh, let's see. Maybe Lost in Space. Lisa Frankenstein. She likes horror movies. That's like a horror comedy. It's a Wonderful Knife. I mean, come on. That sounds like a Sue movie right there. But that's about it. She's not going to get Doom Patrol. But I feel like King Kong, Lisa Frankenstein, It's a Wonderful Knife. They all have that little horror monster feel to them. I, I don't know. I don't know if she's a lost in space person. But but I feel like those other three, potentially. Uh, try to get rid of some movies you know you don't want. Yeah, I know what you're saying, buddy. Uh, let's see. I know. I know. I do have to go through the collection and do that. I am starting... Like whenever I get an upgrade like Steelbook or 4K, I go to the Blu-ray wall and I instantly pull it off. Like I had Aliens on Blu-ray. It's already sitting over here to get, you know, turned in or traded in or something like that. Because I'm not going to watch that. I'm going to watch that. And there's a Blu-ray in that set. So there you go. Unless you guys think for any reason I need to keep that. I can consolidate it into that. But I need to definitely get rid of the shelf space. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Congrats on the job. Yeah, the collector's dilemma, lack of space. It is my curse, my bane. Like, yeah, it is. It is space. Like I said, yeah, even my wife, she's such a great man. God love her. She just, uh, she's so supportive of this whole thing. And she even looked and she just looked in here and she's like, oh, yeah, I'm just sorry. We don't have a bigger place. You know, like she gets me. Like she gets that. You know, I see people with bigger, like, basements, you know, that they can turn into. I said, oh, my God. Oh. I rewatched Garrett from Born to be Rad. I rewatched his tour. See, those are things that, that go, that have endless lifespans or tour videos, like, of your stuff. That was amazing. And then he did a part two. Boy, that dude's got space. Tony, basement blues. Everybody with basements, right? That's the key. I need a basement. I guess is what we're getting at. So I have to move by basement just so I can have a place for my stuff. You have to think that way though, right? Like the next house we get, I have to look at it and go, but is it big enough for my stuff? <laughs> yeah. My wife is not looking forward to moving. She's like, you're packing your room. Oh, I, I know. Oh, I know. And plus I, I would want to be the one packing anyway, because I want to make sure everything gets packed in an order that when I unpack it, it can go right back up on the shelf without just, everything getting mixed up because it takes a long time. Like she even helped me put things on the shelf alphabetically. It, 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 there was that much to do. Uh, Johnny is here. What up? Cool kids. Had to pop in uh, while I'm at work to get my morning mug from one of the coolest kids out there. You're one of the coolest kids, dude. I'm just happy to be one of them with you. Dude, have a good day. Thanks for being here. Uh, Tiger Blue says, have you seen Pay It Forward? Awesome movie with Helen Hunt, Kevin Spacey. Uh, yes, I have. Very good. I agree. Been a long time. Pay forward. Yeah. But that was a good movie. Um, where is that video for the James Bond exhibit? I would definitely see it. Um, uh, I mean, just type Huck's pop culture cafe, James Bond, and it, and it should pop right up. And it, it's the, um, Peterson museum out here in California. Peterson Mu museum always does these great exhibits and stuff. And you'll see it. You can't miss it. I'll, uh, I'll try to see. Let's see. I mean, I could try to see. Let, let, let me see. The, the good thing about it was when I search my own videos, you could just type James Bond right there. And then uh, there it is. <laughs> like literally, it's the only one. Bada bing, bada boom. Here. Here, you guys. If you want to see my... My James Bond video, I just dropped the link at the very bottom. Uh, click it and get it. Uh, there you go. Let's see. Hey. Yo, Johnny, how's it going? Everybody's excited that Johnny's here. Michael Hubbard, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm well. 
I'm well. I hope you are as well. How you feeling? You doing better? Doing okay? Hang in there, chum. Uh, let's see, Van Gool. And now uh, this. I am running out of space as well. Oh, no. The bad part of being collected. Dude, I feel you, man. We should, we should all like come out to the cafe at night, you know, <laughs> talk about what we're going to do about space. Uh, yeah, I just watched The Fighter recently. It's a good movie. Definitely enjoyed it. Definitely recommend it. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Give it four stars on Letterboxd. Actually, I give it four and a half. What up, Tiger B? Let's see, um, talking about finally giving a shot. I watched Friday the 13th, the original movie, for the first time. Ah, at the weekend. I have no idea what all the fuss is about. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. I get it. I get what you're saying. Uh, other than the great Kevin Bacon, you know, he's laying on the bed, just, but, uh, nailed it. It really gets better at part three, right? Because I don't think that movie is a big fuss movie, but when you get to like three and he gets the hockey mask and he just becomes like the Jason that we know, it just kind of becomes like, a superhero horror movie because he's unstoppable. But I will say this. I do like that you've seen it late because then you can judge it on its own merit. Cause like back in the time it was unique. It was different. It was part of that, you know, slasher horror movie stuff that was coming up and it resonated. Right. And then it kept going. So people became fans and now nostalgia says, or has baked into us that it's an awesome franchise. But someone coming in from no nostalgia or anything like that may just find them all mediocre, <laughs> right? I mean, maybe it's hard to be in the nostalgia fan base for it and think that way, though. You know, a lot of people say, well, if I remove myself, but you can't like I, I can't remove myself. So and I don't love all of them, but I think the character's fun. And some of the movies are fun. And, you know, some of the kills are fun. That's the whole point of them. But, yeah, there you go. It's no The Fighter. I'll tell you that. That's a much better movie. I don't even get my steel books on Amazon unless I have no choice. I try to get my steel books off Groove. Yeah, man, Groove is a good place. I much prefer Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Hell right. See, there you go. So th those are the better ones for you. I would say try to watch a couple with the hockey mask. To see if, if you like where they're going. Because that first movie that you watched has none of that in it. So maybe see some of the more popular ones. And I don't say many. Just like one or two. And see if it's any different for you at all. Fish says, you're welcome, Huckster. I'm glad you gave it a shot. I did. Uh, the music is fantastic. It's it's great. The costumes were gorgeous. Don't forget Mr. Gosling was part of the... the oh, Really? No, I did not notice him. Ryan Gosling was in that movie? Dang, Fish, that slipped right by me. Although uh, although I could totally see the, the good-looking dude that was the bartender being a very Ryan Gosling type. I could see Ryan playing that. But, oh, see, I'm going I'm to go pop it back in. I got to try to find a shot of him. I'm the same as you. If I upgrade to a, a steelbook or 4K, the old copy, whoosh, yep, good. That's how you got to do it. Get that store credit. Even if it's like two or three bucks, you get enough of those. You get one free new movie or something like that. I'll, I'll take that. Uh, yeah, I have a small apartment and there's not very much space to put my movies. I know, uh, but I'm trying to make it work. I have plans to put three wall shelves and a spinning. Yeah, get the, spin, the spinners uh, help for space. But for me, I don't even have room for a spinner in here because the way I, my shelves fit, that's it. My, my space is full. Like I, I can't put a spinner in here. I mean, I could, but it, it would be in front of the other shelves. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it that crowded. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to look, see if there's a room. Eh, nah, I don't know. <laughs> I like the hucksters here dropping in some stuff there. Um, did I skip stuff? Yeah. Uh, I've never seen Hellraiser or the Nightmare movies. Oh. So I think like any fran horror franchise, they're all hit or miss. They're uneven. Hellraiser, I'm not a huge fan of. I like the first Hellraiser enough, but 
I don't know. Those movies just don't do anything for me. Nightmare is much better. I like the, the Freddy Krueger stuff. I think he's of all of them. I feel like nightmare is probably the strongest horror franchise. Well, Halloween's Halloween's I don't know, pretty good too. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Everyone has different tastes. Yeah. Uh, I really liked Hellraiser one and two. There you go. And nightmare one and three myself, but Friday 13th is mediocre. There you go. I, th I know uh, several people that think that same way. Uh, Tiger Blue, I do like Halloween more than Friday the 13th. See, there you go. Uh, let's see. I just saved your James Bond video to watch later. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I will definitely do it, Huck, and definitely leave a comment. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Sometimes I think people who watch older movies forget about the time period they came out and how they affect pop culture for that year, um, such as Superman the movie, Friday the 13th. That is true. That is true. All right, now let's uh, let's get to some 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 box office stuff, shall we, y'all? Let's let's do it. Want to chat about what what kicked some booty over the weekend? La, 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 la. How you guys doing? You guys good? I'm getting it. Don't worry. Let's see. There it is. Oh, boom, bam! All right, my friends. Here we go. Well, that's covering up a little too much. So let's just, there we go. So there you go. You got your Godzilla X Kong, the new Empire Remain champ. The champ stood at the top of the charts. Another 31 mil. Look at that. Blockbuster gross 134 a mil in two weeks. The Titans are bringing the cash, y'all. Uh, Monkey Man did not open as huge, I'm sure, as people wanted or expected. Uh, I haven't seen it. I mean, I'm waiting for word of mouth. See what people say about it. Uh, Ghostbusters still doing pretty good. Third place. I'm shocked. I'm shocked it hasn't cracked 100 million yet. That might, I don't know, maybe the franchise is feeling a little tired for audiences. I thought the fan base would have turned out more. Right, Orange Peachy? Come on now, Frozen Empire. It was fun. It was good. There was a lot of stuff cut out of it, though. Like when I watch the trailer, there's all these things I've seen in the trailer and they're not in this movie. Like they're all up on the top of the building and they got the red coats on. I'm like, Ooh, I gotta see what that shot's all about. Shot's not even in the movie. So I don't know if they cut it down to make a shorter movie, but I'd love to see some of those put back in. Uh, the first Omen, another Omen movie, Walt Disney Studios. And <laughs> this is an odd thing. It's number four. So let's talk about that. Omen. There's a franchise I don't care about at all. <laughs> Does anybody have like this Omen love? Like, oh man, the entire Omen series is my favorite. Horror. I mean, maybe it is. But why am I talking like only stoners like uh, the Omen movies? All right, man, cool. The Omen is my jam. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I've just never been like, oh, I said, a new Omen movies just came out. Like, how about we get a new Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th or something? I don't know. With a little bit more punch. I think that's Disney trying desperately to like jump back into the horror game, but at 8 million and look every week after a movie opens, unless it's got great word of mouth drops at least 50%. Now look at King Kong. for example, so that came out pretty big numbers. What was it like 80? I, I want to say about 80 mil, something like that. When it came out the first week, uh, dropped 61%. That's not bad when you start that high. Okay, so that's a that's an okay percentage. It's a little on the you know tough side. Like fifty seven is pretty good, but like Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, that's not bad. It only dropped forty two percent. So th th that's minimal drop. If, if it keeps dropping minimally, that's good for that movie. That said, it's it didn't start super high, so that thus its numbers are still at eighty eight. But Kung Fu Panda, that's only dropped like twenty four percent. It's number five. Uh, even Dune 2 dropped 34%. That thing's doing very well. Someone Like You is number seven. Arthur the King uh, did not do that well. Nice Wal Mark Wahlberg movie with the dog. Immaculate is number nine. And Wicked Little Litters is number 10. Uh, but uh, if your movie can drop less than 50%, that, that means it's going to have some decent staying power for that particular film. So at Monkey Man being at 10 million, that's going to get cut in half next week. So then it'll make five. It'll be out the door 
similar to like Arthur the King, probably. Yeah. What else? Any other thing I can look at? Um, Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. So, and the first Omen starting at eight, it'll be down to four. That'll be out, may not even hit 20 million. So, that's our box office, y'all. I'm back. What do y'all think? So, any of the, has anyone seen any of those? Has anybody seen Monkey Man yet? You got to tell me, man. Have you seen The Monkey Man? I, I hope to go see it, but now that I'm about to start up work on Thursday, um, I'm going to start losing some free time. So, uh, And today, I'm all jam-packed. I'm actually shooting a short, y'all. Going to be in a little short. I'll share that with you as it gets further down the line. But I'm getting fitted for a costume today. A wardrobe, I should say. So that ought to be fun. I'll keep y'all in the loop there. I've never seen Freddy or Jason or Nightmare on Elm Street or even Hellraiser. I was interested in that Hellraiser 4K box set. Yep. And Hug, were you able to see the eclipse just? Um, no, because it not really where I was. I tried. I went out and I did my cell phone because I didn't have the glasses or anything. But I did see it um, through other people's photos. <laughs> and it looked very cool. Hishams here. Hey, sorry I'm late. It's all good. Welcome, welcome. Says, hey, I will send you a picture on Instagram of my burn notice set. Yeah, let me see what it is. Like, it's not like the tub thing. Oh, really? Oh, I think I know what you got. Did you get the box? The box that slides apart? I bet that's what you got. Because I, I know there's a few sets. I'm pretty familiar with them. I didn't know when I was buying that tub that it was going to be the tub. So I expanded it into those, which I'm happy about. But if you've got the box... Yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, let me see the photo you sent me. I really enjoyed the OG. Yeah, the first Omen. Yeah, I have the box set, but I haven't watched the others. Uh, yeah, the first Omen was good. I enjoyed it. It was cool. I've never had the urge to rewatch it, though. So, Fish, you got to let me know when you finally dive onto the other Omens, if that's a, a franchise with staying power, or if you're like, oh, yeah, the first one was really, it had all the, now, of course, the first Omen is directed by a king, man. Richard Donner, y'all. In fact, the omen is why Richard Donner got Superman the movie. Give y'all a little trivia. So uh, Superman the movie was going to be shot in England. And the original uh, director, I'm going to blank on his name, uh, Glenn. Uh, it's okay. It's one of the James Bond directors, Glenn. If my friend Keith was watching, he'd tell me uh, <clears throat> the full name. But anyway. Uh, he couldn't travel like abroad, like he couldn't leave areas to go. Right. So that fell through. Like he couldn't, you know, direct the film. So they were in a panic to fill that role. And they, they basically said, OK, what, what was a hit? What's been a hit recently? And they saw Omen. The Omen was great. They loved it. They thought the directing was fantastic. It was really spooky. This director had some skills. And then that's when they said, let's reach out to this guy, Richard Donner, and see if he wants to direct Superman. And he did. There you go. And thankfully, we got exactly the best Superman for 1978 um, that you could ask for at the time. Boy, you'll believe a man could fly. I sure did. When I saw that, it's my favorite movie. I, I saw it seven and a half times. Kept going back. So good. You found it boring, too? Yeah. Um, can you check and see where it is? A uh, cat's life on box office. Uh, saw this movie with my mom, it was really adorable. Well, let's see. Um, <laughs> wow, uh, it's called let me look at that, a cat's life. Uh, wow, that is not even showing up. Well, let me let me do a quick little scan here for you yeah i'm not even seeing it in the top 50 <laughs> so i was there oh yeah yeah i don't see it bud well i'm sure it was a cute movie i'm surprised yep nope yep don't see it uh it says huck do you like village of the damned with chris reeves uh i haven't seen the old original though wow i'm trying to remember like I've got a bunch of Chris Reeve movies. I don't know if I've seen that one. I'm a big Reeves fan. Is that good though? I may have heard it wasn't that great. 
But if you tell me that's good, and I'm a Chris Freeze fan, and I'm and I'm I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen it yet, especially if it's good. But uh, I gotta check that out. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you gonna be in a movie? It's a short. Yes, I'm gonna be in a short. Yes, I can't tell you what it's about yet. You know, so it's all hush. Got the hush money paid to the huckster. <laughs> no hush money. But um, yeah, so I was asked. I was cast in something. It's gonna be a very funny short. It's gonna be really short. And we're going for costumes today, and we're going to shoot probably like the 23rd, if that works out. I haven't watched the original Omen since I was a kid, but I remember the first two being very good at the time. I wonder if they still hold up if I watch them today. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. And, and look, I know I, I've, it's so funny, Fish. I've several times almost got that same box set, but of course, now that I'm out of space, I'm like, eh. <laughs> I can't. I just, I, I keep looking every time I talk about space. I just look at my stuff and go, dang it. If my room was only like five feet bigger around, that'd be good. Superman, the movie is my favorite because my grandfather played and loved the theme. Um, the piano for me as a kid. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. I wish I could play the piano. My wife can play the piano and my daughter. I have no musical skills, y'all. Fish says, off to work. All right. Have a great Blues Day Tuesday. Fish, thank you so much, buddy. Have a good day. Uh, and we're close to wrapping it up, too, I think, y'all. Uh, that's okay if you can't. If not, it's... Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't see it there, buddy. Sorry. Uh, see you later on Bob's channel. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be there. Hope everyone can join us. That's right. Yeah, let's go back and look. My buddy Fish is going to be with us, too. Let me show you. All right, so one more time. We're going to pimp out Bob's show. Look at we got Fish, Jake, Ken, Jeff, Tiffany, Tony, Tim, and little old me. So there y'all go, man. That's the lineup. Think fast. What's going to happen? I don't know. I do not know. Good Lord, hang on. Slouch in here. Hang on. There we go. Got to do better headroom, y'all. Shame on me. I'm a filmmaker. To frame myself better. I'm all like, hey, uh, come on, sit up straight. Your mama taught you manners. Use them. Um, okay, let's get back to it. Dave is here. What up, Huckster? Thanks, man. Hey, you. Have you seen Christopher? Yeah, and Rear Window. Oh, yeah, I have. I like the original Rear Window better. But, um, you know, it's nice that they gave Chris something after the accident, you know? Uh, would a new Jaws movie be made? There hasn't been one for years. <laughs> that's a good question. Do we need a new, like that's another franchise. Let's just, let's just run it into the ground. And look, Hollywood's notorious for that. So, I mean, sure. Why not? You got all these other shark movies. Sue loves a good shark movie. Dave Durant Cinema loves a good shark movie. So, uh, you know, you got, what is it? 47 meters down. You got shallows. Uh, and those were all good, you know, they're good shark movies. So <laughs> I don't know. Why not? I, I tend to say, let's find something new, but what the hell? If somebody's going to go all out and just make some crazy, maybe Jason Statham can fight him and kick him in the face. <laughs> you know, see Meg too, y'all. Yeah. Big old like giant shark coming at him and puts his foot on the nose. <laughs> Ah, the Meg too. It was nuts, y'all. I uh, sent you a picture of the movie that I saw with my mom. I also sent a picture of <laughs> oh, Katie Keck, Abby. Nice. No remake of Jaws. Yeah, no, not a remake. I, I, I took it as being a new movie. He's just saying, would a new movie be okay? Yeah, yeah. You don't need to remake. There's no remaking the first Jaws. Like that's, you know, if you just want to make another Jaws knock yourself out you know why not but definitely no need no remakes necessary when you got it's a spielberg movie see that what a lot of people like to say is make make movies of movies that should have been good but weren't so take a new crack at it another stab at it and make a great movie from something that should have been great in the in the first place but if it's already a great movie don't remake that like Psycho, don't shot for shot remake that with Vince Vaughn and Anne Hayes. Don't do that. No one. The only thing people talk about that movie is that they shouldn't have made that movie. <laughs> right? I mean, 
All right. So you made a shot for shot. It's just the first one is so fascinating. But there you go. Ar Aroma. Hey, Dimension Scots is here. What up, my brother? How you doing, man? Uh, we need a lot more huck in movies. The, that's I know. They'd be big money makers, man. Huge. It's face on a marquee right there. Ah. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's been a busy morning. Well, welcome. I'm glad you squeezed Oh, hang on. Uh, squeeze it in. Saying, hey, to Dimension. Uh, I like your take on remaking movies. Remake movies that should have been great but weren't. Yeah, no one. Not ones that were great to begin with. That's what I'm saying. It's like if they were already great, what is the point of remaking it? Other than you're trying to just cash in on the, the title. You know, it's like, all right. I mean, I think that's why things like the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street didn't work with you know a new actor people were just so used to freddie being in there i don't know i don't know i think audiences speak so um all right y'all let's see uh, do i have anything pressing not really this is just kind of a, a cash hangout this morning so if y'all have any other big old burning thing for me i'm just gonna get to pimping out a few more things again birthday's coming up tomorrow um so you know nothing really planned probably go out to dinner or something that'd be cool there's a, there's a great place called lazy dog that has this whole like buttermilk honey fried chicken oh yeah <laughs> i had that a while ago it was so good y'all i mean i'm not lying when i tell you it's like the best chicken i've ever had <laughs> i ate that i'm like damn my wife can't have fried food so she was just like oh she's so sad she can't. like yeah i gave her a taste but you know so fried chicken, fried foods are not her thing. Poor thing. Her tummy gets all grumbly. But um, I might go there. That's that's what I'm thinking. We went last night because my daughter passed driver's ed. Because so, you know, we treated her to, don't tell Gus, but she loves the Olive Garden. <laughs> Gus, you watching? No. But um, yeah, so she loves the Olive Garden. So we took her to that to celebrate. But hey, it made for uh, great lunches today for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, one more time, we got Bob's thing coming up. Go check out my Lost Boys video, y'all, because it's awesome. Uh, what else? Who? Uh, anybody else got anything else? I'll let, I'll let you guys pimp it out. Fish, you got anything? Um, who else here? Dimension Scott, you got anything? Just looking at Dave, 4K Low now. If you guys got anything coming up, uh, let me know. P pimp it out right down here. Uh, let's see. Um. Okay, so we have here, he says, speaking of remakes, what are some remakes better than the original? Hmm. Um, gosh, that's a good one. See, I, I'm better when I see uh, examples in front of my face. Um, I'm just jotting my, jot, jotting my memory here. Uh, okay, The Thing. I will say I love The Thing. That's a much better remake. A Star is Born with Bradley Cooper and uh, Lady Gaga. I freaking love that movie, y'all. It's so good. It broke my heart at the end. The Fly, definitely a fantastic remake. Um, let's see. I guess... Mm, some things are debatable, though. So you, get, you got things like It, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. They're excellent remakes, but I think they stand in their own greatness because the other ones are also great. So I'm not sure if either one of those is better, but they're they're really good remakes. So that's, that's another thing, too. So It, the movie, came off of a remake from a TV movie. So that was great. That was a fantastic remake i mean i, I kind of love this topic actually um little shop of horrors that was a really good remake uh the king so here's another one so king kong that's one where i i love the original because i love that um stop motion animation willis o'brien the other killer job that you know excited ray harryhausen then we got all that great harryhausen stuff and then Peter Jackson's remake is fantastic. So I like that one differently. But yeah, of the ones I said, uh, yeah, those are some of my favorite remakes. Would you call Dread? Because you had Stallone made Judge Dread, and then Carl Urban did Dread. So I would say 
that that dread was better, but I love the Stallone Judge Dread. I'll go out and say it, man. I had fun. I liked Stallone's Judge Dread. I don't mind that he took his helmet off because I have no like like history with the comic book and the guy never taking his helmet off, whatever. Like you're paying Stallone millions of dollars. He's your box office marquee. You're going to show, you're going to let Stallone show his face. That's fine. But for, for the comic book lovers, they hated that. Oh, he slowly took his mask off Arr! and they just got all in an uproar. So I think the super fans stayed away from the movie because they did that. And then the movie just went on to do mediocre success because Canon put it out. So Canon ran out of money for the big epic conclusion because leading up to it, look, Rob Schneider was a good comedic foil. The, the robot, you know, the, the big one was so very cool looking practical effects. Y'all not a CG robot, practical built thing. Makeup was great in the thing. Max von Sydow's in this thing. Stallone was really good in it. The wardrobe looked cool. The, the atmosphere was, it was a, a fun movie for me. It's just at the end, they had all these clones in these tanks and they were supposed to come alive. And it was going to be this huge fight. And in typical Masters of the Universe, Canon Pictures, Superman 4, Canon Pictures, they, they ran out of money at the end to do the big ending. So they should almost shoot the ending first. <laughs> when, when they have all when they have the money. And then and then figure out a way to make the rest of it look as good. So if you're running out of money, it's not the ending that suffers. So there you go. That's that that's my take on a few remakes. But yeah, like. Fly, The Thing, Star is Born. Those are some of my favorite remakes. Um, I bought that five film Omen box set because it was on sale. Uh, yeah, that's when I almost bought it too. That $30 price point was pretty sweet, but I was like, eh. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for the happy birthday. Appreciate that. Thank you there. Oh, look at that. The man, the best guy on YouTube. I try, man. I just do my thing. There's a lot of great people on YouTube, but thank you. I appreciate that. And many happy returns. Thank you, Mr. James. No, I don't have anything coming up. Oh, I'm going to be doing my review for Friday uh, or, or Saturday for Civil War. Oh, cool. All right, man. Be on the lookout for that. Remake of The Ring. I, I was about to say The Ring, but I don't think I've seen the original Ring. Um, but you liked it better, surprisingly. I liked the original Japanese version, too. But the U.S. Uh, was more well-rounded and entertaining. I need to see that original one. Because I did see that on the list. And I was like, mm, I can't rightfully say The Ring if I haven't seen the original as well. But all the other ones, I have seen the originals. Um, is this a good example? What about Star Trek The Motion Picture? Well, I mean, that's it's a great... It's a great interpretation to bring up. Because Star Trek 2009 is not a remake of The Motion Picture. It was basically, and people use this term a lot, it's a reimagining of the Star Trek universe starting from when they met like that's a story we never got. How did Kirk and Spock meet? How did they all get together? So that it, it's a new story that just happened to be cast with new people. And in doing so created sort of a new timeline because a lot of what they were doing didn't line up with the canon of the original Star Trek. So that's more of just like a, um, a reimagining, a reinventing. Uh, but what did I think of it is I liked it. I did enjoy it quite a bit for its own thing. I'm always a bigger Shatner Nimoy fan, always will be, but what I can do as a Star Trek fan, and you have to be able to do this, I think, as any franchise fan, even if it's like that remake of, of Nightmare on Elm Street, right, is take it for what it is and see if you can enjoy that film, right? So I have to disassociate myself from everything I know about the original cast of Star Trek and then watch... Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, and cast do their thing, and they go, "Was that good?" And yes, it was. It was. It was a good. And I like good sci-fi. It's a good sci-fi. I thought Nero was a good villain, uh, so I thought it was was excellent. Um, and for more audiences, it was a more entertaining movie <laughs> than Star Trek: The Motion Picture. I'm not gonna lie. It was more fast-paced. It was more flashy. It was more attractive. Um, there was more. You know, just it was just a a better paced film than the original motion picture, which, you know, a lot of people think is boring, but I get it. So good question though. Yeah. Nice fan girl. Cool. Uh, the King Kong steelbook did a waste up artwork. So they didn't have to show the, the twin towers. Oh, the original post is that, is that it? 
like if you do a punch in on that, let's see. King Kong 1966 poster. Oh, yeah, you was right. <laughs> nice. All right, look, I love it. I love, man, I got the best audience in the world, international audience at that. You guys come from all over the globe to hang out at the cafe in the morning. And I appreciate that. Look at this thing. Let's share it. There you go. So there's the original King Kong. He is. Th that is the that is the steel book. I'm trying to see if I can get there. It is. So that that is the steel book of him standing on top of the two towers. Uh, yeah. So they just punched in on his on his upper torso. Kind of. Let's see. It's uh oh, they reversed it too. Ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's slightly different. They also move the artwork around. So you can see the, is that the Chrysler building that's got the point under his elbow? Uh, they move that up and put it behind his head for the steel book. Yeah, it's slightly, like they reversed his angle, so he's looking the other way on the steel book. That's, oh, that's clever. Good catch on that, man. <laughs> yeah, so roughly the same artwork, but they moved the background up so they could get the... It's either Empire State Building. I think it's the Empire State Building. Over his shoulder. Clever. Good. Uh, happy birthday. Oh, I, I think we did that, but thank you. Let's see. I agree again with you, Huck. Nice. So many remakes become their own thing rather than being an updated copy. Yeah. Well, like I think the, the new three Star Trek movies, they're their own thing. So there are fans out there who only know those films and they probably just own the Chris Pine movies and that's their Star Trek. You know, they're, they're just fans of that. Oh, I like that. Those, I don't like those old movies. I don't want the old people. They want the hot young versions of them and that's fine. You know, if anything, it brought new fans to Star Trek, you know, and hopefully some of those people, uh, you know, sniffed around the universe a little bit and found some other fun stuff they could watch. Uh, let's see. Now you're talking about it and I'm thinking about it. There have been some great remakes. LOL. OK, I take it back. Sometimes you can remake a good movie. I know. Right. It is funny because like that's why I found that a very great comment. Because it's like, you know, that that that's a topic worth exploring, I think. Oh, let's get on that, y'all. Maybe that's something I'll put on the channel. Because that that can get rewatches. Do you think we'll get uh, Twister on 4K before the new? I don't know. But look, you can't plan it any better. You got Twisters coming out. And by the time that comes out, it that's the best time for the original to be re-released on 4K and sell well. Like if it just came out today wouldn't sell that great right but if you time it for the new movie that's when you put it out i know they haven't announced it or anything maybe they're keeping it a secret but what better time to put that back out on 4k and if not then because you screwed up and you didn't see it coming like oh my god hey don't, don't we have an original twister movie yeah oh then maybe make it so that it comes out on 4k when that movie comes out on 4k, right? So that the two come out concurrently, right? And you can buy them both, but it, if it's going to come out on 4k, th there shall never be a better time to quote star Trek six. <laughs> Nobody knows that. Huck. Okay. So there's this Romulan, right? And they're talking about striking at the right time. And this one guy says, anyway, <laughs> Uh, hey Rob, what up, man? The Lost Boy, what up, Huck? Are you gonna catch that replay later? Just stopping it. Thumbs up. Thank you. Look, let's check it out. I don't even have my YouTube up. How am I doing, y'all? How's my How's my views? Anybody watching? What's the likes? Tell me. I gotta know. I gotta know. Here, I'll I'll, I'll pop it up. I'll see how we're doing. Let's do the morning mug. Nope, gotta turn on my monetization. Yeah, girl. There it is. <laughs> I always forget to turn on the monetizations to these live shows because when you start them, they're, they're inherently just not there. Uh, but what do we got? We got 19 watching, 23 likes. That's pretty good, y'all. I think everyone thinks we're wrapping up here. But um, all right, let's 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 go ahead. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. 
Uh, but thank you, Rob, for, for doing that. Those Star Trek movies, the ones with Pine, uh, is what got me interested in the older Star Trek. See, there you go. Uh, it made me want to go watch them. That's my point, is, is if those did their job correctly, it was to bring new fans, new life, new interest into the, all the old stuff. And look, if you ended up becoming a fan, wow, do you have a wealth of Star Trek to watch with all the series and all the movies. It's just like, honestly, you have more Trek to enjoy than Star Wars. So now, you know, you can vary that. What's the quality of both? I think they all have their ups and downs, honestly. They each have their, their highs and their lows, but they're all worth checking out. Corey, yeah, man, for sure. Such a dope co-host right there. Uh, all right, y'all. I think I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, wait, is there anything? Hang on. <laughs> let's let's check my thumb. Check my thumb. What up, thumb? Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Just looking at my stuff. We talked about the eclipse. Talked about all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think about the Mando and the Grogu movie? So a rumor has it that they're they're putting it together to come out in 2026. Man, that's a long time away. That is a long time away. This will be our last to talking point. Talk about sci-fi, right? Is releasing <laughs> the movie. So like, are they going to do a season four first? Like, like I didn't have too much time to dive deep onto that, but it's like, is that your next move with Mandalorian? If so, that is substantially far away from your season three. Cause that was what last year, 2023, Three years later, that's when you're going to bring us the movie version of the TV show we could see for free. I don't know. All the stuff that Star Wars has to mine and the next movie, like you keep hearing movies are going to get made and then they all fall through. They None of them get made. There can't be a better franchise for Disney to have bought than Marvel and Star Wars. And yet... The only Marvel movie this year is Deadpool, which I can't wait for. It's my number one. I think it's going to be great. And, uh, you know, Star Wars. And there's no there's no movie coming out. Like, I get it. The very last one was polarizing. A lot of people didn't like that Palpatine came back, and that Ray was a Palpatine daughter. It's like, I, I didn't like that either. It's like, come on. And then in the end, she just calls herself Skywalker anyway. So it's like, <laughs> I've never rewatched that since. I don't think I've, I've seen, I've seen um, the force awakens <laughs> several times, but the other two sequels I've never watched again since I've seen them originally in the theater ever. Never once, but the original trilogy I've seen countless times, of course, because that's the best. Uh, but anywho, so yeah, man, that's, that's, that's all I got. That's all I got on that. Y'all. So Yeah. So there you go. Um, again, go check out my Lost Boys. Check out Bob's video tonight. It's going to be dope. It's going to be fun. Fish going to be there. We're going to have a good old time. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to call it, y'all. Thank you so much for coming out and uh, hanging out the mug, having a good conversation. You guys are the best. You've got the best audience in the world. And uh, whatever you go out and get, get your favorite movies. Go get some of them horror movies. Uh, get that King Kong on steel if you want. But whatever you do, go out and make it a good day. So until next time, we'll catch you guys later. everybody i appreciate you coming by and sharing your time with me until next time be safe be kind i'll see you on the next one